Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Certain arbitrary relief procedures should be accomplished to remove any potential interferences that may resist complete seating of the casting before it is placed on the master cast. An assortment of stones, discs, burrs, and polishing instruments are necessary for this operation. All sharp edges on the appliance framework should be reduced and polished. All areas of the framework which cross the free gingival tissues should be cut back and rounded. The inferior edge of the reciprocal arm should be reduced and polished. The occlusal rest form should be made concave to coincide with the opposing occlusion. Suitable stones such as the number five and number 11 gemstone can be used for these minor framework adjustments or a specially assembled touch-up kit can be obtained for this purpose. Any sharp edges of the lingual bar are reduced. The superior border of the major connector is rounded. Minor connectors are cut back to more adequately conform with the anatomy involved. When proper reductions have been made, a suitable abrasive polishing instrument is used to provide the desired smooth finish. The tissue contacting surfaces of the occlusal rests and the reciprocal arms of the direct retainers should not be reduced. However, any flash of metal beyond the rest preparation is removed and the polished surface sculptured. Following these adjustments, the appliance should readily seat on the master cast. The positions of the occlusal rests are inspected to determine the accuracy of fit. The master model is now returned to the dental surveyor and positioned according to the original scored survey line. The contour of the abutment tooth is evaluated for retentive areas. The survey tool is then removed and a carbon marker inserted to record the height of contour on the abutment tooth. The framework is reseated and the clasp position observed in relation to the height of contour. The clasp outline is drawn on the abutment tooth in red. The contouring of the wrought buckle arms of the combination clasps is completed at this point in the construction procedures. By permitting the retentive portions of the clasps to be free of undercuts, the areas that are resistant to complete seating of the rigid framework are more easily detected. Only finger or plier pressure is used for the initial adaptation of the wrought structure over the surface of the cast. Any excess length of wire is noted and removed.
by marking the clasp at the point it loses contact with the tooth surface and grasping the clasp with the proper pliers at this position, a few simple bends will achieve the desired result. The clasp is bent over a round beak to prevent marring the tooth contacting surface of the clasp. The wire was originally positioned so that it made positive contact with the tooth at the point of union with the casting. So no adjustment is required at that point. Ideally, the retentive clasp will be so formed and adapted to the tooth surface that when the framework is in the rest position, the clasp terminal would be in a static relationship with the abutment tooth. A fine textured disc is used to remove any residual plier marks and to round, taper, and polish the clasp terminals. Rubber abrasive points are used to complete this procedure. The contouring and adaption of the wrought portion of the combination clasps complete the pre-delivery of the casting. Temporary bases are now added to the framework. Tin foil is used as the separating medium. With the tin foil properly adapted, a small portion of self-polymerizing acrylic resin is placed just distal to the abutment tooth on either side. The framework is then seated into this soft mat. The remainder of the temporary base is formed and allowed to cure. The appliance with the temporary bases is gently removed from the master cast. The foil removed and the resin trim from the area of the abutment teeth. The anterior aspect of the buckle flange is trimmed to free the retentive clasp. The remaining excess of acrylic is contoured to reproduce the anatomic outline obtained in the impression. Care must be exercised when using the laboratory lathe to prevent trapping or binding any unit of the framework during this procedure. The completed temporary base should exhibit a smooth tissue surface and well-rounded non-irritating flange borders. The appliance is now ready for the next clinical procedure. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.